I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and hey, this is the last week in the month of September. Praise God. Now, this is 2021. We're done with September. Think about it. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, the labor in vain that build it. Don't rush to build something by yourself that God hasn't built. I'll tell you what will happen if you do that. It will become in vain. And you don't want to spend your energy, spend your life doing something that will end up being in vain at the end of the day. When I, what do I mean in vain? No need. It's like a father who goes, look, I need to build houses for my children. I need to, I need to, and then, he, he puts all the pressure on himself and does and builds and, and, and does all those things. And then the children grow up and they are not even interested in what he has done. Because they grow up and they begin to find their own way for themselves. And I have this inheritance. Um, okay, um, I'll give it to anybody. Like, this is what I spent my whole savings to do. Is it such things happen? Now, that's why it's important you follow the leading of the Spirit of God in everything. Praise God. Let's go into today's broadcast. But before we do, let's call for our daily bread. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. It is coming to me now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, it's amazing. Jesus said we should pray that prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And guess what? Jesus is the high priest over our confession. Jesus is the high priest over our prayers. Now, if Jesus have told us how to pray, and then we obey him, and he is the same one who receives our prayers. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How perfect is it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we honor you today. Thank you. You are so loving, Lord. You are so caring. And that's how we have come to know you because of your love. Thank you today because everybody in the life of anyone watching and listening right now is removed. And every yoke in their lives is completely destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, you know, this, this began to stay up in my spirit as I was meditating on doing this broadcast. <clears throat> Why do Christians suffer? You see, your phone rings and you pick up the call and someone is making a request and telling you how bad situations have been. You meet people and they are telling you how bad situations have been with them. And you begin to think, these people are not unbelievers. These people believe in God. They pray. They are committed in church. And then you look at their lives and you're looking for the color. In all sincerity now, not, not trying to mock them. No, in all sincerity. 
and you're looking for the color. Now, you don't have to have the whole world to be happy. But you see, there is nothing you're going to tell a man who cannot feed and tell him that God is with him. It would be too hard to believe. Now, Apostle Paul said something. He says, having food and raiment, let us there be content with. Meaning, if you can get food to eat and covering for yourself, of course, that includes clothes to wear, that includes shelter to live in. He says, let us be content with that. Now, that doesn't mean don't desire any other thing. He's saying, relax. As long as, and now this is the truth, this is what Paul was saying, as long as you're not begging for bread, as long as you're not begging for shelter or what to put on, he says, relax. Why did he say, be content? Is he saying that's all God can give to you? No, that's not what he's saying at all. What he's saying is, if you are not begging for bread, if you're not begging for shelter, Calm down so that you can begin to focus to fulfill the destiny or the purpose that God has assigned for you. The, the real destiny killer is lack of focus. Lack of focus. And what makes people, you know, sometimes when, when, when you hear people talk, all this, all this prosperity gospel, all this is, is taking, a, taking us away from the, from the real essence of the gospel. Hey, what is the real essence of the gospel? Have you ever thought about it? It boils down to John 3.16. I mean, that is the gospel. God so loved the world and that love cost him to give his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. Now take note of that word, should not perish. Now that's not just talking about dying. That means going under in any way, anything that, that would make you perish. I mean, being um, financially stagnated, it's like perishing. You know, for example, if, if something happens to your finances, what, what would you know? You hear people exclaim and say, Hey, I am finished. I am finished. Or maybe they dupe you and say, Hey, he has finished me. You see, now, because that is an important um, part of your life. So when you find out, you know, when, when people start saying all those talk about, uh, let's not talk about uh, money or needs. Now, I know people go overboard with these things, but hear me. God's interest in your life is your welfare. He is so interested in your welfare. I mean, so interested that Jesus said, you take no thought for your life concerning these things. Don't, don't think about what to eat. He, I mean, he said, take no thought. So it's not just talking about worrying too much. No, take no thoughts. Why? Because your father, he said it, your father knows that you have need of these things. Now, it's the same vein, it's in the same vein, Paul was saying, you have food, you have raiment, be content. Like I said earlier, be content doesn't mean go sleep, as in don't, 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 don't think of any other. No, he's saying relax and find your focus in life and begin to work out your focus. How do you find your focus? That is why we have been given the Holy Spirit. And the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Jesus said, he will guide you into all truth. What truth? You know, we, we just limit the Holy Spirit to Bible things. So all your life, you are trying to understand the Bible. All your life, you know, sometimes believers, you don't understand. When, when they argue, they're arguing scriptures. They're arguing, you know, um, this is what Paul said here. This is what, come on now, we have a life to live. 
all the things written in the Bible were written for us to learn from, not for us to struggle to live. You know, people make these mistakes. Your whole life, you say, we, we have to be, we have to be accurate in scriptures. We have to be, you know, did God send you here to come and study the Bible? You know, when I hear some believers talk sometimes, we have a life to live. And this is the truth. If you are living the life by the Holy Spirit, your life will confirm the scriptures, not your arguments. Stop arguing scriptures. Leave it. The scriptures will testify if you are living it or not, just like what Jesus said. You search the scriptures. He said this in, in, in John chapter 5, I think from verse 39. He said, you search the scriptures because in it, in other words, in the scriptures, you think you will find life. And the scriptures testify about Jesus. And look at what Jesus said that is the shocker. And, he says, and then he says, and you will not come to me that you will have life. See? The same thing lots of believers do today. They search the scriptures, they argue the scriptures, and the way they argue the scriptures, as though the one the scriptures is talking about is dead. Why argue about in the writings of a book when the author is still alive? Send him a mail, call him up, and say, sorry, you said this in this book, I feel... There's something wrong with the, 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 the explanation of what you said. And then he will tell you what was on his mind. How do, we, how do we do this thing sometimes? I'm talking to every one of you listening to me right now. Whether you're a preacher or you're a brother, how do we do these things? How do we, how do we sit down and we're arguing over these things that like, like Jesus is dead? And nobody, you, you watch preachers argue sometimes and nobody says, okay, you know what, let's pause. Can we take some days to pray and, or even fast and pray concerning this thing and, and know what the Lord is saying? And meanwhile, it should relate with something that have to do with your life, not, not just knowledge sake. We chase knowledge that is not applicable in our lives. That, that's what we do. So, because we're not living the scriptures, we don't encounter real challenges that will provoke the right questions. So, so someone is arguing, was, was it three wise men that went to visit Jesus or, or was it two? How does that apply to your life today? How does the knowledge, the accuracy of that knowledge apply to your life today? There are many things to be concerned about and this is the truth. The moment you start to live by the Spirit of God, because that's what Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And then you will now begin to realize that, uh, it, uh, um, and this is the truth, you will begin to find out that a lot of things or a lot of things you have known have been by assumption. Because a lot of things that you thought the scriptures meant is really not what the scripture said. And your eyes will be opened. And not open for arguments, open for living. Because now you begin to live it. And, and you will find, you will never know the joy of salvation until you begin to live the life. So, so when I see people suffering, and it boils down to this truth, they are really not living the life. How many people feel, you see, this whole thing we do, this whole Christianity thing is just so that we can be holy and be godly so we can make heaven. But while we are here on the earth, we've got to be struggling, you know, to make ends meet. We have to struggle for ourselves and, 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 and come on, come on, come on. Things ought to change. My concern for you this week, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to so hit you with the truth from the Spirit of God. My concern is that your life must change. You can't, con this is, this is September ending. You can't continue like this. 
No, you can't. Because God has made a way for you. Praise God. My time is up for today. We are going to continue tomorrow. Listen, listen. If you will listen to me this week, you will be provoked for a change of life and a change of status. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will expressly reveal himself to you this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.